Would you like to stay in a treehouse? Maybe an old windmill or a doghouse in Idaho? What about a 15th century castle perhaps? Or maybe you prefer a haunted cave in Australia or the fuselage of an old plane? Now, thanks to one of the world's most popular companies in recent years, all of this is possible. I am talking, of course, about Airbnb, a company that I am sure, in one way or another, you all know, and that many of you have probably used at some point. We are talking about a company that has caused a revolution in the tourism sector during the last decade, and that, in 2020, experienced a real turning point, not only because of the pandemic, but more significantly, because of its flotation on the stock market. You see, my friends, on the 10th of December 2020, Airbnb starred in one of the hottest, most eagerly anticipated and craziest stock market launches in recent decades. On its first day of trading alone, the shares were re-evalued and, are you ready for this? More than 112%. And that was just in one day of trading. Shares that started at $68 shot up to $144.71 at the close of the session, giving Airbnb a market value of nearly $90 billion, more than double that of the Marriott Group, the largest hotel chain in the world. And that's not all. Since then, the shares of this company continued their dizzying ascent until they surpassed the $180 barrier by the time of making this video in mid-January. 2020. That is, in just one month, just one month, Airbnb shares have shot up 150% since its debut on the stock market. Or, put another way, they have multiplied by 2.5 until surpassing the barrier of $100 billion of market value. This makes it neither more nor less than the largest company in the world in the tourism sector. Therefore, in this new video that we have made in collaboration with Value School, we have asked ourselves a few questions. What is behind Airbnb? What explains its formidable launch on the markets? Is it reasonable that the market value has exceeded $100 billion? It's worth noting that 2020 has been a surprisingly great year for stock market listings and that investor appetite has been insatiable. To give you an example, it is estimated that in the United States alone, companies raised more than $155 billion in stock market listings and capital increases in the middle of the year of the coronavirus, which would break the previous historical record of 1999. But still, what do investors see in Airbnb? Well, are you ready to join us on this journey into the depths of Silicon Valley's latest giant? If you are, let's get cracking. A shining star. You see, my friends, although it may come to us as a shock and it may seem to us that Airbnb has been among us much longer, the truth is that its history is a very recent one. Its roots go back to 2007. That year, during an industrial design conference in San Francisco, a light bulb went on for Brian Chesky and Joe Gebbia. The hotels in the city were practically full, so these two friends fully understood that a good business opportunity could be had for San Francisco residents to give visitors a place to stay in their homes. To this end, they joined with Nathan Plicharzik and created the service airbedandbreakfast.com. Quite a name. A service that would later become Airbnb. Much better. And that, during the next 13 years, would cause a revolution in the tourism sector. In just one decade, this service has transformed the way people travel, unleashed persecution from many regulators, enraged many neighborhood groups, and created enormous prosperity among hundreds of thousands of homeowners. Homeowners who became true entrepreneurs in the tourism industry almost overnight. But having said that, I think it's time to get down to business. You see, my friends, the numbers that this company has achieved in the last 10 years are impressive, to say the least. Do you want some concrete data? Then check this out. At the end of 2020, Airbnb had 4 million hosts on its platform, which is how people, or companies, renting out their properties are known, as well as a catalogue with more than 5.6 million advertisements for active homes and experiences in 220 different countries. A catalogue so large and at the same time so diverse that you can find almost any kind of accommodation, from a country house in Croatia to an apartment in New York, a farm in Australia, or a luxury cottage in the heart of the Alps. In 2019 alone, Airbnb brokered reservations worth $38 billion, serving 247 million guests. 
Now, how exactly does Airbnb make money? Well, basically, as I'm sure most of you know, for every transaction, every reservation that is finalized on their platform, Airbnb receives a commission. A commission that varies depending on demand, but on average ranges from 8 to 17%. In return for this commission, Airbnb is responsible for attracting traffic, keeping its platform up to date, processing payments, and offering different tools for hosts to manage their properties efficiently. In addition, since 2016, its platform no longer only offered accommodation, but hosts can also market experiences, leisure plans of all kinds, from preparing a paella in Valencia, to touring Berlin in an old Trabant, or enjoying a tea ceremony in Tokyo dressed in traditional komus and yukakas. In short, almost anything you could think of. The idea in this case was not only to generate a new business modality, but also to improve the travel experience, as well as adding value and loyalty to its platform. Well, the fact is that with all these lines in the water, over the last few years, Airbnb's growth has been meteoric. Now, we are talking about a market value of over 100 billion, and that is no small change. For example, the company that could be considered its biggest rival, Booking.com, had a slightly lower value at the time of making this video, despite billing almost three times more and being much more profitable today. For example, while in 2019 Booking achieved an operation profit of over 5 billion, Airbnb recorded an operating loss of $500 million. And the truth is that during 2020, the valuation of Airbnb has changed a lot. And I'm not just talking about the IPO. In April 2020, in a fundraising round, the company was valued about 18 billion, one sixth of its value by the end of the same year. So the question, the big question we can ask ourselves is, what are investors seeing? What are the main strengths of this travel giant? Well, let's see what we find. Highs and lows. First of all, what we can see is that, unlike many of the Silicon Valley stars of late, Airbnb is bordering on profitability. Although it recorded an operating losses of almost $500 million in 2019, a figure that was even higher in 2020 as a result of the coronavirus, those losses were largely the result of heavy spending on marketing and business development. Adjusting these items to a normal industry parameters would bring Airbnb's income statement out of the red. In other words, the feeling is that the company is prioritizing growth, but that operationally its business is already profitable. And that, in these times, is really saying something, especially if we're talking about Silicon Valley. But actually, what has probably attracted the attention of many investors has been two other aspects. The first of these is the coronavirus pandemic. Yeah. That's right. As for any other tourist company, the SARS coronavirus has had a strong impact on Airbnb. However, against all odds, its behavior has been much better than that of the competition. For example, while during the first nine months of 2020, the other two major accommodation booking platforms, Booking and Expedia, saw their revenues drop to less than half, the impact for Airbnb was substantially less at just over 30% of their turnover. And not only that, by the third quarter, Airbnb had already managed to right the ship. The loss of turnover was reduced to less than 20%, a performance 30 points better than the industry average, and also 30 points better than the two rivals we just mentioned. At the same time, thanks to a major adjustment in the workforce and a new policy of cutting non-essential costs, a positive result of more than $200 million was achieved during the third quarter. In other words, Airbnb not only managed to perform much better than its rivals, but also managed to be profitable during the worst stages of the pandemic. Then, on the other hand, the second element that I am sure has attracted a lot of attention from investors is its growth potential. The market that Airbnb has at its disposal is enormous, which could ensure a lot of growth during the coming years. And look, while this platform facilitated reservations worth $38 billion in 2019, the company estimates that the potential size of its market today amounts to more than, wait for it, $1.5 trillion. Which incidentally, fits with most estimates that we could find and also with the calculations of rival companies like Booking.com. In other words, if Airbnb has demonstrated a significant competitive strength in 2019, it is now expected that this strength will allow it to take a growing part of the pie that is 
as we said, enormous. And that is without taking into account new business opportunities that the companies could exploit, such as renting out medium-term stays, stays that go beyond the short-term visit, such as business trips or student accommodation, for example. Remember, the Airbnb model has many advantages. You can easily get a furnished apartment, well set up, with a history of reviews and all services contracted and operational. It could also market other tourism services through its platform, or even launch a service to be an intermediary in the purchase and sale of the properties that are marketed themselves on Airbnb. Don't forget that, in the end, the company with the best operating data is precisely this company. All these possibilities, which have already been put on the table, would greatly increase Airbnb's potential market. Of course, on the other hand, there are also risks, among which I think we can highlight two. First, Airbnb is a promise of growth and that growth has yet to materialise. And although its growth rates are higher than those of the competition, it is true that they have been decelerating over time and that some businesses like the one related to local experience have not really finished taking off. On the other hand, there is also a regulatory risk. The crusade of city councils and governments around the world to limit the proliferation of tourist apartments. How far can this risk go and how can it affect the competitive position and growth levels? Well, my friends, that is one of the great uncertainties that must be taken into account when talking about Airbnb. Certainly, do not think that this is a minor issue. And now, I think we've pretty much covered the main factors that gave rise to the $100 billion valuation that the company has reached. In the end, as is usually the case with Silicon Valley companies, it all comes down to one expression, expectation of growth. For example, let's estimate that Airbnb will achieve, by 2030, an average commission of 15% of the gross income and an operating margin of 30%, which is slightly less than that achieved, for example, by Booking.com. Well, in order for the company to be listed in 2030 at a price EBIT ratio of about 25 times, and to have generated an annualised return of 10% during this period, its operating profits in 2030 would have to be about $10 billion. This would mean, with the data we have indicated, a volume of booked reservations of more than $230 billion. That is, to justify its current valuation, Airbnb has to succeed in multiplying the brokered reservations on its site by more than six times over the next decade. The question is, will they do it? The market seems to trust it will. But my friends, these are very demanding numbers. Of course, if we have learned anything over the past few years, it is that these types of companies are capable of the best and the worst. These types of gambles can be very lucrative, but also very risky. And with that said, I'll pass the questions over to you. Do you think Airbnb will achieve such monumental growth? What do you think of this company? Have you ever used them to look for accommodation? What was your experience? And how have they changed things in your city? Leave us an answer in the comments below. Take care. And as always, I'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about politics and world affairs and hear some more of my lovely voice, come check out the Reconsider podcast, where we don't do the thinking for you. Find Reconsider at www.reconsidermedia.com or on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcast. Show.